guys, Jake Fulton here, Master Trainer and Fitness Director, and I wanna to talk to you guys today about my Super 7 exercises. And we're gonna work on some things for good posture, some core activation to get your glute muscles firing and just make you feel good. All right, I got Eric here, and he's gonna show you guys our first Super 7 drill. It's called the Band Pull Apart. And you wanna take any resistance band of a medium to even lighter resistance. We like to say less is more here. And he's gonna hold that band up with good posture and palms up. And what he's gonna do is slowly split that band apart. All right, he's working on keeping his core engaged. He's gonna squeeze his shoulder blades together. And the point of this drill is to help you when you've got that hunched shoulder effect, you've been at the computer for a couple hours, you've had a long commute, or you've been on your feet all day, you're gonna try to shoot for 20 of these. And what this drill does is it works your shoulders down, takes some tension out of those traps, and helps lock you in to that perfect posture position. Okay, our second drill of the Super 7 is called the wall slide. And this exercise is another drill that I like to use when I've been on the computer for a while or I've been seated and again, feeling that hunched over shoulder effect and tight back. So Eric's gonna push his lower back into the wall. He's gonna put his elbows and fingertips on the wall and he's gonna try to maintain the contact points of the back, elbow, fingers, and head as he inhales up to raise the roof. Then he's gonna exhale down and he's gonna squeeze his back muscle without having any gap back there. All right, this drill will take you from this position, 10 of these a day, will give you a neutral spine, and again, work out some of that computer time, work out some of that commute time. Our third drill of the Super 7 is really just a basic squat. Uh, what we wanna do on this drill when we work onto our squats is open up our hips a little bit uh, and just get that lower back opened up and feeling good. So Eric's gonna get in a nice posture, a nice you know, stable stance. He's gonna keep the weight back into his heels and he's just gonna pull his body to the ground and slide down to a comfortable level. All right, if that's your level, that's fine. He's gonna drive back up. What I wanna try to do is get my elbows down and inside of my knees a little bit and then push out, keep the weight back in the heels there, big guy, and then drive up. I like to hit about 15 or 20 of these. These can be done anywhere. You don't have to be in the gym to do them. All right, if your level's only right here, that's okay with me too. I'm pushing back into the hips, pushing the knees out, keeping the core nice and tight. Now, if we wanna to progress to that and you guys are in a gym setting, you can grab any kettlebell or dumbbell. We like to hold it in a goblet position. This is gonna help called front loading. It's gonna help him activate his core, keep his chest tall, and he's gonna sink his hips down. You hear his breath and he's gonna exhale and drive up. Great exercise if you're just trying to get the hips open, you've been seated for a long time, you just wanna let those hips breathe. Our fourth Super 7 drill is what's called the hinge. This exercise is one of my favorites because it teaches us how to hinge at the hips. And when you do that, you open up and let your hamstrings breathe. Well, when your hamstrings are tight, that leaks up and gives you really some of that nice stiff back or maybe some of that sciatica pain. So we're gonna try to work through those with a hinge, a hinge movement to let them open up and breathe. So I'm gonna give Eric a body bar. Okay, if you guys don't have a body bar, you can use a broomstick if you're at home or any type of standard stick. He's gonna get into that nice posture, abs tight, knees loose, but we're not gonna bend the knees. And then we're gonna slide down as far as we can go. Now, some of you may be able to come all the way down to parallel and then drive back up. If you got super tight hammies, your finishing spot may just be right here. And then over time, every day when you try these, you find that you make it down a little deeper and a little deeper. Again, another wonderful exercise if you've been seated throughout the day, been on your feet, you got tight hamstrings, you got a sore lower back, bring this down, do 10 reps, hold at the bottom of each rep, and then get a good squeeze of your posterior, your backside when you come up and let everything open up and breathe. Our fifth drill is what I call a super plank. And Eric's gonna be into a nice plank position. He's gonna have a straight line from his ear, his shoulder, to his hips. I call this the foam roller treatment. I'm gonna check here that his head is touching the roller, his upper back, and his glutes. Now from this position, if you can hold this for a good 30 seconds, that is awesome. But if you can hold this for 30 seconds and take some big deep breaths, Eric, inhale big. As he exhales, he's gonna pull his shoulders back towards his hips. He's gonna keep his abs tight and he's gonna squeeze his backside as tight as he can. And in 30 seconds, I like to breathe through this drill three or four times. 
it gives our core a little bit of structure. It turns on your abs and it starts to take a little bit of pressure off your back. Now, if this is too much for you or you do feel any pain in your back, you simply bring your knees down and stay into that tight plank. You see, if I use my roller, it's still going to hit his butt, his shoulders, and his head. Once you've mastered this, your next progression would be to work into some proper push-ups. Come back to your toes and show them five proper push-ups, Eric, with that beautiful elbow position. See how he's tucked those elbows in, he's not flaring out, and he's keeping that straight line through his core. Once you can hold a plank for 30 seconds and breathe properly into it, then it's time to progress to those push-ups to pump up the chest and get those arms firing. And if anyone has any wrist issues or shoulder impingement, we also suggest coming down and doing these from your forearms as a little bit of a modification. I put my forearms on the mat so you got a nice soft pad. Same thing, hips, back, head on the mat. He's gonna inhale and drive his elbows towards his toes, drive his toes towards his elbows, and try to maintain for 30 seconds. If he can do that in 30 seconds with three or four really good breaths, then we start to progress past this basic plank movement into some more push-ups, into some other unstability exercises. But that's a perfect plank with perfect breaths, squeezing as tight as he can. All right, our sixth drill is gonna be called a glute bridge. All right, if you have knee pain, uh, again, if you have back pain, this drill is going to help you turn on the glutes and fire them. We sit on our butt a lot, very often, all the time in life, all right, so that turns these off. So this drill, he's going to put that band on above his knees, he's going to slide both feet through there. I'm going to kind of just shimmy it up so it doesn't pull on him too hard there. Go ahead and come on down to your back, and on this you want to have your ankles that is a slight angle out in front of your knees. He's gonna drive his lower back into the ground. And what I want Eric to do is push through the heels and squeeze his rear end to raise his hips up into the air. All right, he's keeping the knees out and keeping tension on this band. And we're working on getting some burn out into the meaty portion of your rear and up underneath into your glute medius. I like to do about 15 of these reps. I'm gonna have him keep his toes down. 80% of the weight's in the heel, 20% in the toes. If you don't have a band, that's fine. You can still do these and they're still effective. The band just really helps flip that switch and turn up that intensity. You see he's not overarching when he comes up. He's coming up with a nice tight core, getting a good squeeze at the top and then controlling it down. You wanna do these till you get a good burn and you're really feeling like you're on a six or a seven out of 10 on how much your glutes are burning. A little bonus exercise, I like him to hold the bridge up Without dropping down, he's gonna slowly go in and out with his knees without letting that bridge drop and then slowly bring it down until your lower back hits. So if you do not have a, a band at your disposal, a couple other options would be to use a yoga block in between your knees to get a good squeeze. As he raises up and down, he's squeezing on that block. This is gonna work a little bit more of your, your inner thighs, but still working your glutes and still helping take some pressure off of that lower back. Even better, if you don't have a yoga block, you can use any towel, slowly between the knees, get a good squeeze on there, and he's squeezing those knees together to raise the hips up and down. No block, no towel, no problem. You can still do the drill. Try these before any run or any cardio session, and I promise you, the next day, your backside's gonna thank you. All right, the last drill of our Super 7 is gonna be our TRX row. And if you flip around here, Eric, this row exercise is gonna work down into his middle back. And again, where we want to build up to help promote better posture, help taking pressure off of the, the traps where we put all the stresses of life uh, uh, up top into the neck and shoulders and get down and build into these bigger back muscles. We're gonna use a TRX, a total body resistance exercise. You can find these in almost every gym. Uh, there's a couple things that we do want to make them. We want to make these at about hip level or between hip and knee level versus being all the way down long to the ground. So if you see one, you just grab and pull the tab to make them to the proper level. He's going to grab his TRX and he's going to face the anchor. You'll see as Eric does this drill, he's going to stay into a really nice plank position. He's going to keep the TRX modified and he's at a nice moderate angle. Go ahead and give me one nice big pull in there. He's squeezing into his middle back. He's rotating his hands. Now go ahead and lengthen the arms. If that's too challenging, all he does is take a little step back and that drastically takes off some of the body weight. Go ahead and give another one. Good, and he's gonna lengthen back out under control. If you'd like to make them more challenging, step way on forward. Now we're adding lots of body weight. 
almost has this back to the ground and he's gonna hit that same rowing exercise. You see he's bringing his elbows tight to his ribs. He's kind of squeezing his elbows in behind his back. Good, walk that back one more time, show them the nice standard 45 degree angle, a little rotation in the hands, a good squeeze of the elbows, building up those big, strong back muscles and spinal stabilizers to promote good shoulder health, good posture, and a strong core. If you don't have a TRX or don't have one available, you can always use your trusty resistance band. You can tie it around any pole, any doorknob, or anything of that matter. And you're gonna see Eric's gonna do the same thing. He's got nice shoulders down, core tight. He's gonna get a good pull in towards his back with that band and squeeze him through. I like to do about 15 reps of this exercise. I'm trying not to feel it in the biceps. I try to get that good squeeze in the middle back. Again, maybe a little heavier resistance band on this one because you're using some of those bigger back muscles, those big strong back muscles to get that good pull and again promote that good posture. So that was the Super 7. Remember these drills can be done as a warm up, they can be done as an entire workout. Or if you've spent ample time on the computer, commuting, or just have a sore back and hunched over shoulders, they're all designed to really open up your posture, retract your shoulders, start to take a little pressure off the back, activate the core, and turn on the glutes.